In 2005, I played the first God of War game and I was absolutely blown away. And of all the game characters out there, I've gotta say Kratos is one of the most badass of them all, period. So have you ever wondered what our favorite video game characters would be like if they somehow jumped through the screen and came into our world? Where would they work? How would they fit in? What would they do? And most importantly, what would they order if they went to a restaurant? Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to my kitchen. In the very first episode of this series, we're gonna take a look at Kratos, one of my favorite video game characters of all time. And we're gonna cook something that I think he would order if he went to a fancy restaurant. So in the original comic books, Kratos was something like seven and a half feet tall, 285 pounds of mountainous muscle. And in God of War 4, the most recent game, he was scaled back to, I believe, six foot four. But either way you slice it, this is a giant of a man. I'm pretty sure Kratos didn't get that big just eating ambrosia and apples and drinking nectar. The interesting part about video games is that we rarely see people eat, shower, shave, or shit unless you're playing Shenmue or Death Stranding. God of War is the same. At no point do I ever remember seeing Kratos actually eat anything. However, Kratos is a huge dude and just looking at him, I doubt he'd be vegetarian, nor would he be shopping in a dairy-free section of the grocery store either. I got it. Good. Kratos is a man's man, so we're gonna be making this dish all about the meat, since this guy needs a big boy meal. I am calling today's dish a meal for the gods. We are gonna prepare the most insanely delicious meat dish that I know. We're gonna make a classic Italian dish called osobuco, which is a braised meat dish with wine and sofrito and tomatoes served over polenta. If you've never had it, it is phenomenal. Now, traditionally, this dish is actually made with a veal. However, I went to my local butcher and I found these gigantic four inch thick Wagyu beef shanks. These things are huge, enough to feed two people easily. But since Kratos is a big boy, I think he can polish off one by himself. Time to get started. Okay, first things first, let's get started on this giant piece of beef. This step is optional, but I'm gonna go ahead and tie a butcher's knot around these shanks so they don't fall apart in the oven. Go ahead and tie it snug, cut off this bare twine, and season with kosher salt and pepper. Then we're gonna go ahead and dust the shanks with flour and drop them into a combo of grapeseed and olive oil to brown. Grapeseed to keep the smoking point low and olive for flavor. And don't forget to brown the fatty sides. Mmm, perfect. My favorite moment ever with God of War is fighting Poseidon from God of War 3. Not only was the fight just so freaking epic, but also has one of the most brutal boss endings ever. After the fight's over, Kratos picks up Poseidon and beats the living shit out of him with his bare hands as the camera spins around the action in first person. Then Kratos proceeds to grab him like a little clown boy and rips his eyes out before throwing him off a cliff. Poseidon crashes into the water and then the waves envelop the land and sea as Kratos watches in triumph from above. Unbelievable. Never bested until the ass whooping of Hercules in God of War 3. I gotta admit, I'm more of a lover than a fighter, but um, watching Kratos kick the living shit out of everyone he sees kind of makes me want to be a video game character myself. I can see my trailer now. In a world where you have to fight to survive, one man, one mission, one chance to seek redemption. Summer of 2020, Tomok is White Samurai. Next up, let's wash some leeks, carrots, shallots, and celery. Then go ahead and chop them up. 
If they're not the same size, it's really no big deal because we're gonna puree the sauce in the end anyway. Toss the veg into the same pot you brown the meat in with some olive oil, five minutes. Season with salt and pepper and Calabrian chili flakes if you have them. Then go ahead and crush some garlic, remove the germs and the roots, and LeBron James them into the pot from deep. Brown one minute. So now that we've got our base, let's go ahead and hit it up with an ass load of red wine and cook for a few minutes until you can no longer smell the raw alcohol. Next, go ahead and crush some whole tin tomatoes with clean, hairy hands and slide them into the pool. While you wait for the goods to boil, grab any herbs you have and wrap them up with twine. I've got some fresh bay leaf, rosemary, parsley, and baby thyme for my garden, so I'm gonna use these. I'm also gonna add some orange rind as it's gonna help be a nice counter to the acidity from the wine and the tomatoes. So it's gonna bring some nice harmony and balance. Lastly, go ahead and dump in three to four cups of beef stock. Put the shanks back in, bring to a boil, and put in a 300 degree oven for a three and a half hour nap. All right, so what's the best God of War game? I've got a lot of fond memories of the first game, but the second game and the third game took everything I loved about the original concept and just made it bigger and better. More boss fights, a bigger scale, and much better pacing. But truthfully, every God of War game has tremendous boss fights. Fighting the God of the Underworld, Hades himself, was haunting. The Zeus fight was epic, given the obvious story significance following the finale of God of War 2. <laughs> I loved, loved, loved the Magni and Modi fight and Sigron from God of War 4 as well. And also one of my favorites has got to be Loxus and Tropos, which was this perfect blend of puzzles and gameplay within a boss fight. Plus this really awesome moment where Atropos flies you back into time to witness your epic battle with Ares in the original game. We control your destiny, foolish mortal! With a win, we can end your life! <laughs> so fantastic. So we're two and a half hours in, so it's time to start on our polenta, which will be the creamy buttery blanket for our gigantic piece of meat. Polenta is really easy to cook, but it's also pretty annoying to cook as well. The traditional ratio is four to one, so go ahead and bring four cups of water to a boil and then slowly stir in one cup of cornmeal. Then proceed to stir like a maniac for up to 30 minutes. No lumps. We want this stuff to be as soft as a baby's ass when it's done. When it's almost done, add in a handful of Parmesan cheese, two tablespoons of butter, pepper, and enough salt to your satisfaction. Next, go ahead and retrieve the shanks from the oven. They've done their time, they should be ready. Remove from broth and blend the broth. Normally for an Italian family dinner, we would never blend this gravy. But since we're cooking for a god, we're gonna go the extra mile. Go ahead and strain the gravy next back into the same pan and reduce until thick and luscious. <music> Lastly, go ahead and mount with butter to achieve extra richness and shininess, which is a very restaurant thing to do. While all this was happening, I also made a quick horseradish gremolata on the side. Combine equal parts parsley, lemon zest, and fresh grated horseradish into a bowl and stir. Do not use that crap from a jar. You can use this condiment on basically anything and it's gonna taste good. You know, Kratos isn't exactly the most likable video game character. He's been betrayed by his friends, and even his family forced to use his rage as a weapon to attain the revenge he so desperately wants. 
and sometimes that means doing some pretty nasty and extreme things. And in the most recent game, we see a new side to Kratos, one that's wiser, definitely more emotionally stable as well, and portrays the tribulations of a struggling father, emblazed with a new humility. But that doesn't make him any less badass, and today we made a badass meal that I definitely think he would order if he went to a restaurant. Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for watching. We've got a gaming food show now. Yes! All right. It's been in the works for about a year now, and we finally got around to shooting it the way we wanted to. So if you want to see this show become a series, just all you've got to do is thumbs the video up and comment down below who you want to see featured in the next episode. So thanks for watching the show, guys. If you want to learn how to make this dish, it turned out absolutely delicious. You can check the recipe in the description. So thanks again for tuning in. Hope you guys are doing awesome. Peace, love, and happiness until our next video. Take care. Oh God, time to take a shower. Ah, oh, smell like meat.